Well, we have one short verse. There can be no doubt that that verse is jam-packed with absolute authority and power. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. I must be honest and confess unto you, my brothers and sisters, that I have trouble with that last sentence. I always have. Let not your hearts be troubled, and let them, neither let them be afraid. My heart is often troubled. My heart often goes to places that it should not. It goes to places of despair. It goes to places of desolation. In other words, my heart turns inward on itself. It points back to me the reality of who I am. And the only way that I can get out of it is to repent. And when I repent, I realize just how much I had been leaning on myself and how much I had not been relying on God. And if I could have turned my heart to not be troubled, then surely I would not have been afraid. And yet as a sinner, we all, I think, could agree that our hearts often turn inwards on themselves and we are troubled. We are afraid. Christ tells us not to worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. And yet I say unto Christ, and perhaps you are the same, no, 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 the sun won't rise unless I worry about it. Unless we worry, unless we fear, unless we cast our minds upon the things of this world, we cannot be happy. At least that's what the world tells us. And yet for all the worry, for all the fear, for all the anxiety, for all the depression, for all of the absolute trouble that is in this world, in all of the sickness, in all of ill health, in our time of dying, in other words, once again, in troubles, in matters of marital strife, in matters of sibling strife, in matters of children and parents simply arguing and bickering and not getting along, there we have trouble. And where we have trouble, we are afraid. And yet Christ says to us, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. And as simply taking this one verse with, without some context, once we give it context, we understand exactly who we rely on. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. These words were spoken on the other side of the cross. These words were spoken on the other side of the tomb. It was right before Christ was going to ascend into heaven to my Father and to His Father. That's when He said this. He had already given up His life for our atonement. He had already forgiven all of our sins and poured, and, cry, and God the Father poured all of His wrath upon He who knew no sin, who became sin for us. He had already risen from the dead, giving us the hope of a true resurrection. 
And it's after that, having been locked in their room out of fear of the Jews, the Pharisees, being locked in a room, being with their hearts troubled, that Christ appears in the midst of them and says this, Peace I leave with you. I must go away. I must prepare a mansion for you in heaven. But I will not leave you alone. I will send you my helper. And that helper who will enter into your heart through the waters of holy baptism will say unto you, Peace, peace, peace. The peace of the Holy Spirit. It's an otherworldly peace. It's not the peace of when we check our watches to make sure that we aren't late. It's not the peace that we get in this world by, uh, by achievements, by acclaim, or any other honor that is bestowed upon us in this world. It's a peace that connects God the Father with us. In other, world, in other words, the war between God and man is over. Peace in the sense of wartime. Peace in the sense of God the Father looking at us with the eyes of His crucified Son and saying, we, like in the Garden of Eden, our will, our image is upon you. And upon you rests my peace, for there also rests my Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie.